Hello, everyone. This is C.L. Cannon of Fiction Atlas Author Services, bringing you another Feel Good Friday author interview. Every week, I strive to bring you inspiring tales about the author journey. Today, I'm here with science fantasy author J.S. Burke. J.S., thank you so much for agreeing to this interview, and we're really happy to have you with us today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your book or books? Sure. I'm writing science fantasy novels with dragons in an undersea world. And my background is kind of varied, which is helpful for the science fantasy in particular. I'm a marine biologist, and I've supported myself at various times as an artist and a chemist and an educator and mm, a few other things. That's so, awesome. And a, a renovator, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can learn whatever you put your mind to. Exactly. And, um, what sparked your love of writing, and you know, how old were you when you wrote your first story? I started writing when there was a teacher in fourth grade who started a poetry club, and I began to go to that. It was after school. Probably the parents were happy to have me stay a bit longer, <laughs> and I started writing poetry, and she was just an amazing teacher, and she got her little poems published, and and no, I don't think any of them were award-winning, but I loved words. I started reading the dictionary for fun, and I started writing little stories for fun. Mm-hmm. So I guess I started writing in fourth grade. That's great that you had someone that, you know that, that would foster a love of that at an early age, because I know a lot of you know kids don't have that. So that is really great. I you know. I was very fortunate. Um. See, what tools do you use most while writing? Do you have any specific programs or just specific little quirks that you do, you know, when you write, when you're planning, when you're plotting? Um, well, my plot are sort of a mixture of evolving as things happen and a very bare bones idea of where it might go, which can be changed. So I start talking typing in Microsoft Word and write down a few things and carry paper and pen with me wherever I go and jot down an idea. Right. And then then I start editing as I go to make it better. So I'm constantly editing, writing, editing, writing, going back and forth. Sometimes I might spend basically hours on just one page. Right. I can I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, because trying to get it just right so it has everything in it correctly. All right. Yeah. Um, do you use any online programs or anything mm-hmm. like that? Or are you mostly a, a paper paper kind of person? I'm a paper person. Mm-hmm. I can't do online programs but I don't well I just use my I type in Microsoft Word, but I don't use any other program. Okay. I know some people use Noveler and Scrivener and a bunch of those right. other things like mind mapping. And I, I'm just, I just like writing everything down on paper. And like you said, you can edit as you type it into Microsoft Word. And mm-hmm. That works for me. And I, I'm satisfied with that way of doing things. And also with Microsoft Word, I can check to see if I notice I might be using a word too often. I can do a find mm-hmm. search in there and, and go, wow, okay, I overused that word. and Right, it's great find, for, for finding crutch words. Yeah, and then I can change half of those out or whatever to something else. Mm-hmm. I can make sure I didn't use said too often and throw in more action. Right. So it works. If it's not broke, don't fix it. That's what okay. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> when do you find yourself most inspired to write, and where do you do the majority of your writing? Mostly, I have a computer set up in the den, a little laptop, and so I do a lot of it there. And then the dining room table is sort of my art and writing table. That's where I do my painting and the jewelry and the and the writing, and I just sort of jump between them as my brain is ready for it. Right. Do you find that, you know, once you get into writing, if you if you get stuck or if you get stressed, that going switching over and going to more of an art creative thing like helps you with uh, writer's block or helps you just kind of de-stress oh definitely oh when i need an instant de-stress i designed some more earrings i've designed about five thousand so far oh wow (laughs) so i mean way too many but 
I'll, I'll eventually do. You can never have three earrings. <laughs> Oh, no, never, never. Um, I, I mean, I'm in different art groups, so I sell them there and stuff, too. But, um, and then I I do scrimshaw work, and that takes a little more effort. But if I need to get really intense, I'll do the scrimshaw because you're doing these itty-bitty lines and you can't make a mistake. Mm-hmm. So then if I'm doing painting, I really go all out there. If I'm doing a mixture of the watercolor where you can't stop, and you've mm-hmm. got to just keep going for hours. That'll really get your brain somewhere else, and then you can come back. I, I, I find that pretty much the same, too. I do a lot of design work and editing work and writing, and if I just get too caught up in words, I can go to something creative, more more, more creative, I guess, because editing and writing, is there are so many rules, and creativity, there's basically none. You can do whatever you want with it, and I think that really does help. Yeah, it just de-stresses you. Mm-hmm. Um, what is your favorite type of character to write? I write young adult science fantasy. So I generally have a character to work with that is who is um, fairly young, often insecure, generally a bit different. Mm-hmm. And and then I go from there. I My first character, Dragon, Iraq, was unusual because he had a gift for mind traveling that nobody understood. Oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, so they thought he was just totally weird because he would miss his meals. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't normal for a dragon. Right. Right. So he was rather bullied and made fun of. But eventually, if naturally, it being science fantasy, he comes through as a hero. Mm -hmm. But then for my next book, since he's sort of grown up in the first one, I added Dracor. He's an ice dragon. And he has had a, a rough life, but he's an ice dragon, and ice dragons are very self-confident. Uh-huh. So um, he's a bit different, and yet he's facing an uphill battle because he has to challenge the leader, and the leader is not going to like what he has to say. Mm-hmm. And then I have Finder Sea World, and Scree is my major octopus. She's a healer. She has a healer bag. And, um, she's kind of fun because she's become a favorite of people from very young to in their 80s. So she's a very deep philosophical character, rather zen-like and fearless, and just totally committed to doing the right thing. So, and octopuses are really interesting because they're as smart as we are, maybe smarter. Oh, really? And, oh, yeah. They have Some of them have more neurons than humans do, like wow. some types. And they have nine brains, one main brain, but they have a brain in each arm. And they can shape shift in the blink of an eye to match almost anything. And some do that intentionally to match different creatures, just apparently for fun. Oh, that so, is so interesting. I never even would ever even guess that. Yeah. Well, my marine science background helped with that. So right. I've, been, I've been fascinated by them forever. And... So they're they're natural shapeshifters. They can change the color and shape of the body. And they can change the way they act, and they can squeeze through tiny openings. So it's it's a marvelous science fiction type character, and I use all the natural science of it, but then, of course, give it a different slant. But I did predict something because I have an octopus village, and people thought they were solitary, and I thought, oh, they're too smart. They wouldn't be solitary, and then they found a village off Australia this year. Oh, wow. So I thought, okay, I figured that out based on what I learned. <laughs> like, yeah, I knew that, people. I knew that. <laughs> what? That's right. I told you. I've been telling you. Why didn't you listen to me? <laughs> That's right. Why didn't you listen? <laughs> oh. Well, what advice would you give to other new authors who who might be struggling to to get into writing, who might be struggling to achieve their dreams? I would recommend that they just keep writing, keep editing and writing, and then sharing it when they feel comfortable with someone who is a friend who will give them advice with a nice spin to it. Right. Or they'll point out some of the good things along with some of the things that could use improvement. Mm-hmm. But I think most people can write if they really want to devote themselves to it. I've encouraged several people in the past to write stories that they have that would be marvelous. And so far they haven't taken me up on it, but 
I think okay, it's a very intimidating thing for some people because it, in the art, pretty much a lot of people don't view it as a real vocation mm-hmm. and they think that they won't make money from it or that they won't be good enough and they'll be judged by their peers. And of course, every, you know, everything you do is judged by your peers in the first right. place. But I think that may be something that holds a lot of people back. That could be. And they could even just write it for themselves, though. Yes. It would be nice to keep some of these stories alive. What do you hope your future looks like? What are your plans for your future and what are your dreams? If if they're in me enough, I wouldn't mind writing maybe five or six of my Dragon Dreamer stories because they have an audience now. Um, And that could be kind of fun. The most unusual character, person who who likes Scree, apparently, is a two-year-old who's absolutely fascinated with Scree. <laughs> I never anticipated a two-year-old fan. <laughs> right. <laughs> because my books are really written for age nine to adult, mm-hmm. and they're layered for different for different ages, but I wasn't anticipating two. And he's made a little healer bag, and he's filling it up with all the stuff that Scree carries around with her. <laughs> Oh, that is so cute. I know. Whenever I feel whenever I feel like, oh, why am I bothering? Why am I spending so much time on this? It takes forever to write a book. And then I think, well, because there's a little two year old who waits at every octopus picture he sees and says, Hi Scree. Yes. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. I know, that's what I thought. I thought, okay, that is super cool. Um, and fun. And and I'm hoping to get people interested in the ocean. Because, and I know that this has happened because I've had people tell me that their kids and even themselves went to the library to find out more about the undersea world. So if people know more about it and it's more personal to them, right? then they'll be more apt to try to protect it. Mm-hmm. So, and it needs protecting. Yes, it does. I will agree with you with that. Um. I, th- I think that's another a great thing. Like you said, th- on days when you think, why well, bother, you know, there's a, there's a two-year-old out there that, you know, that loves your stories. And sometimes it's not for all the accolades and it's not for all the awards or for, you know, the, the websites that are going to praise you or the New York Times bestsellers list or any of that. Sometimes it's just touching that one person that yeah. makes everything worth worthwhile every every hour you've spent, you know, building these worlds and and all the self doubt that you have, just that one person makes makes the difference. Oh yeah. And then at the other end there's a fellow who's almost ninety, I think, who um who lives in Italy who contacted me and said that my story has a profound human message and he loves it. So, so that, I thought, wow, that's a real fan. That's very rewarding. I, I love hearing stories like that. Yeah, that's the real reason, because as with most things, you've got to do it because you love it. You can't expect you're going to get super wealthy doing something. Right. And it's got to be something that you love, especially writing, I think, and to make a difference in the world in some way. I think that's why I do it. That's a great answer. Uh, Someone was talking to me the other day, and they were like, well, you should be very careful about what topics you write about and and how you discuss those. And I said, well, why? A book can change someone's mind. A book can change the world if you put enough into it. If you research, if you, you know, inspire someone, you could set a whole ripple effect. And, you know, people listen, listen to books. People can get messages from those and just be inspired and it can change their whole life or can change the whole planet if we allow it to. Yeah. Books are powerful. It makes me feel really satisfied when I know that I've touched people. I just um, had feedback from teenagers and adults and grandparents and grandkids and, and it has made them think about different things like, bullying and acceptance and differences because with the dragon and an octopus you've got amazing diversity mm-hmm. and they each have different abilities that complement each other and so they're able to help each other out in tight spots and that can apply to our world it really can and you know using i mean you know that's basically using metaphors and it's helping people see things in a different way if you know entertaining them 
in a way, but also ha- helping them relate to the characters and helping them relate that into their own real life. Yeah, that's definitely it. <laughs> well, I guess that's all the time we actually have today, but thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us. Um, I'm going to leave all of JS's uh, social media and her website in the description. So please check them out. Uh, now, if someone you know would like to request a Feel Good Friday interview, please send an email to info at fiction-atlas.com with a subject line, Feel Good Friday. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back next Friday with more inspiring author stories for you.